So back from my run, showered, as you can see I've got poofy hair. It's time to get towards the end of Mr Alex Ryder. Where we left it yesterday, he had just been captured. I cannot wait to see what happens, though I'm a little bit worried it will be grim. Because Mr Grin does not strike me as the kind of person who's going to tickle him to get information. Brace yourselves, the school bully. They came for Alex the following morning. He had spent the night handcuffed to a radiator in a small dark room with a single barred window. It might once have been a coal cellar. When Alex opened his eyes, the, gr the grey first light of the morning was just creeping in. He closed them and opened them again. His head was thumping and the side of his face was swollen when Mr Grin hit him. His arms were twisted behind him and the tendons in his shoulders were on fire. But worse than all this was his sense of failure. It was 1st of April, the day when the storm breakers would be unleashed and Alex was helpless. He was the April fool. It was just before nine o'clock when the door opened and two guards came in with Mr Grin behind them. The handcuffs were unlocked and Alex was forced to his feet. Then, with a guard holding him on each side, he was marched out of the room and up a flight of stairs. He was still in Sale's house. The stairs led to the, to the hall with its huge painting of Judgment Day. Alex looked at the figures, writhing in agony on canvas. If he was right, the image would soon be repeated all over Britain and it would happen in just three hours time. The guards half dragged him through a doorway and into the room with the aquarium. There was a high backed wooden chair in front of it. Alex was forced to sit down. His hands were cuffed behind him again. The guards left. Mr Grin remained. He heard the sound of feet on the spiral staircase, saw the leather shoes coming down before he saw the man who wore them. Then Herod Sale appeared, dressed in an immaculate pale grey silk suit. Blunt and the people at MI6 had been suspicious of the Middle Eastern multimillionaire from the very start. They'd always thought he had something to hide, but even they had never guessed the truth. He wasn't a friend of Alex's country. He was its worst enemy. Three questions, Sale snapped. His voice was utterly cold. Who are you? Who sent you here? How much do you know? I don't know what you're talking about, Alex said. Sale sighed. If there had been anything comical about him when Alex had first seen him, it had completely evaporated. His face was bored and businesslike. His eyes were ugly, full of menace. We have very little time, he said. Mr Grin? Mr Grin went over to one of the display cases and took out a knife, razor sharp with a serrated edge. He held it up close to his face, his eyes gleaming. I've already told you that Mr Grin used to be an expert with knives. So continued, he still is. Tell me what I want to know, Alex, or he will cause you more pain than you could begin to imagine. And don't try to lie to me, please. Just remember what happens to liars particularly their tongues. Mr Grin took a step closer. The blade flashed, catching the light. My name is Alex Ryder, Alex said. Ryder's son, his nephew. Who sent you here? The same people who sent him. There was no point in lying. It didn't matter anymore. The stakes had become too high. Am I six? Sale laughed without any sign of humour. They send 14-year-old boys to do their dirty work. Not very English. I'd have said. Not cricket. What? He had adopted an exaggerated English accent. Now he walked forward and sat down behind the desk. And what of my third question, Alex? Or how much have you found out? Alex shrugged trying to look casual to hide the fear he was really feeling. I know enough, he said. Go on. Alex took a breath. Behind him, the jellyfish drifted past like a poisonous cloud. 
He could see it out the corner of his eye. He tugged at the handcuffs, wondering if it would be possible to break the chair. There was a sudden flash and the knife that Mr Grin had been holding was suddenly quivering in the back of the chair, a hair's breadth from his head. The edge of the blade had actually nicked the skin of his neck. He felt a trickle of blood slide down his collar. You are keeping us waiting, Herod Sale said. All right. When my uncle was here, he got interested in viruses. He asked about them at the local library. I thought he was talking about computer viruses. That was a natural assumption, but I was wrong. I saw what you were doing last night. I heard them talking on a speaker system. Decontamination and biocontainment zones. They were talking about biological warfare. You've got hold of some sort of real virus. It came here in test tubes, packed into silver boxes, and you've put them into the storm breakers. I don't know what happens next. I suppose when the computers are turned on, people die. They're in schools, so it'll be school children, which means you're not the saint everyone thinks you are, Mr. Sale. A mass murderer. A bloody psycho, I suppose you might say. Herod Sale clapped his hands softly together. You've done very well, Alex, he said. I congratulate you, and I feel you deserve an award. So I'm going to tell you everything. In a way, it's appropriate that MI6 should have sent a little English schoolboy. Because you see, there's nothing in the world I hate more. Oh, yes. His face twisted with anger, and for a moment, Alex could see the madness alive in his eyes. You bloody snobs, with your stuck-up schools and your stinking English superiority. But I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you all. He stood up and walked over to Alex. I came to this country 40 years ago, he said. I had no money. My family had nothing. But for a freak accident, I would probably have lived and died in Beirut. Better for you if I had. So much better. I was sent here by an American family to be educated. They had friends in North London, and I stayed with them while I went to the local school. You cannot imagine how I was feeling then. To be in London, which I had always believed to be the heart of civilization, To see such wealth, and to know that I was going to be part of it. I was going to be English. To a child born in a Lebanese gutter, it was an impossible dream. But I was soon to learn the reality. Sale leaned forward and yanked the knife out of the chair. He tossed it to Mr. Grin, who caught it and spun it in his hand. From the moment I arrived at the school, I was mocked and bullied. Because of my size, because of the colour of my skin, because I couldn't speak English well, because I wasn't one of them. The, The names, they had names for me. Herod Smell, Goat Boy, The Dwarf. And they played tricks on me. Drawing pins on my chair, books stolen and defaced. My trousers ripped off me and hung out on the flagpole underneath the Union Jack. Sale shook his head slowly. I had loved that flag when I first came, he said. But in only weeks, I came to hate it. Lots of people are bullied at school, Alex began, and stopped as Sale backhanded him viciously across the face. I haven't. Finished, he said. He was breathing heavily and there was spittle on his lower lip. Alex could see him reliving the past and once again he was allowing the past to destroy him. There were plenty of bullies in that school, he said. But there was one who was worse than any of them. He was a small, smarmy, shrimp of a boy. But his parents were rich and he had a way with the other children. He knew how to talk his way around them. A politician even then. I think I can see where this is going. Politician? Oh yes, he could be charming when he wanted to be. When there were teachers around, but the moment their backs were turned, he was on to me. He used to organise the others. Let's get the goat boy. Let's push his head in the toilet. He had a thousand ideas to make my life miserable. And he never stopped. All the time he goaded me and taunted me and there was nothing I could do because he was popular and I was a foreigner. And do you know who that boy grew up to be? I think you're going to tell me anyway, Alex said. I am going to tell you. Yes, 
he grew up to be the bloody prime minister. Sale took out a white handkerchief and wiped his face. His bald head was gleaming with sweat. All my life, I've been treated the same way. He continued, no matter how successful I've become, how much money I've made, how many people I've employed, I'm still a joke. I'm still Herod Smell, the goat boy, the Lebanese tramp. Well, for 40 years, I've been planning my revenge. And now, at last, my time has come. Mr. Grin. Mr. Grin went over to the wall and pressed the button. Alex half expected the snooker table to rise out of the floor. But instead, a panel slid up on every wall to reveal floor-to-ceiling television screens, which immediately flickered into life. On one screen, Alex could see the underground laboratory. On another, the assembly line on a... On a third, the airstrip with the last of the lorries on its way out. There were CCTV cameras everywhere and Sale could see every corner of his kingdom without even leaving the room. No wonder Alex had been discovered so easily. The Stormbreakers are armed and ready. And yes, you're right, Alex. Each one contains what you might call a computer virus. But that, if you like, is my little April Fool's joke. <laughs> Because the virus I'm talking about is a form of smallpox. Of course, Alex, it's been genetically modified to make it faster and stronger. More lethal. A spoonful of the stuff would destroy a city. And my stormbreakers hold much, much more than that. At the moment, it's isolated, quite safe. But this afternoon, there's going to be a bit of a party at the Science Museum. Every school in Britain will be joining in, with the school children gather around their nice shiny new computers. And at midday, on the stroke of twelve, my old friend the Prime Minister will make one of his smug, self-serving speeches and then he'll press a button. He thinks he'll be activating the computers in a way... He's right. Pressing the button will release the virus. And by midnight tonight, there will be no more school children in Britain. And the Prime Minister will weep as he remembers the day he first bullied Herod Sale. <laughs> You're mad, Alex exclaimed. By midnight tonight, you'll be in jail. Sale dismissed the thought with a wave of the hand. I think not. By the time anyone realises what has happened, I'll be gone. I'm not alone in this, Alex. I have powerful friends who have supported me. <laughs> Yasin Grigorovich. You have been busy. He seemed surprised that Alex knew the name. Yasin is working for the people who have been helping me. Let's not mention any names or even nationalities. You'd be surprised how many countries there are in the world who loathe the English. Most of Europe, just to begin with. But anyway, he clapped his hands and went back to the desk. Now you know the truth. I'm glad I was able to tell you, Alex. You have no idea how much I loathe you. Even when you were playing that stupid game with me, the snooker, I was thinking how much pleasure it would give me to kill you. You're just like the boy I was at school with. Nothing has changed. You haven't changed, Alex said. His cheek was still smarting where Sale had hit him. But he'd heard enough. I'm sorry you were bullied at school, he said, but lots of kids get bullied and they don't turn into nutcases. You're really sad, Mr Sale, and your plan won't work. I've told him I six everything I know. They were waiting for you at the Science Museum. So were the men in white coats. Sale giggled. Forgive me. I don't believe you, he said. His face was suddenly stone. And perhaps you forget that I warned you about lying to me. Mr. Grin took a step forward, flipping the knife over so that the blade landed in the flat of his hand. I'd like to watch you die, Sale said. Unfortunately, I have a pressing engagement in London. He turned to Mr. Grin. You can walk with me to the helicopter, then come back here and kill the boy. Make it slow. Make it painful. We should have kept back some smallpox for him, but I'm sure you'll think of something much more creative. <laughs> he walked to the door, then stopped and turned to Alex. Goodbye, Alex. It wasn't a pleasure knowing you, but enjoy your death. And remember, you're going to be the first. The door swung shut. 
handcuffed to the chair with the jellyfish floating silently behind him. Alex was left alone. Whoa, what a corker. I really like the character of Herod Sale. I don't mean that there's anything likeable. I think he's a brilliant character. I really, sometimes when authors make characters who have, you know, got serious mental health concerns, like would be considered insane, they're unbelievable. I find him quite believable. Maybe it's in my head I've made him believable. And I hope you liked the voice. I hurt my face with that crazy grinning talking. But Alex is still trapped. Mr. Grin is going to be back for him in a matter of minutes. Well, I hope he can think of a way out of this. Let me know what your favourite part of the chapter was, because I felt like that was a brilliant chapter. There's a lot of speaking, a lot of speech, but really powerful. Enjoy!